Are you ready for a death match? Cause today we're talking Spike Brothers. Stand up, Bangano! It's time to discuss the last uh, clan of uh, Destructive War. So let's uh, jump right into things and let's see what Spike Brother got to offer with their new support within the standard format. All right, we begin with the vanilla triggers again. Two uh, two stars to all the triggers. Let's move on. The vanilla starter for uh, Spike Brothers is Mega Trainer, and again, like the other vanilla tra starters, I give them for four stars. Very good, interesting skills. So let's move on to the first actual cards of Spike Brothers. All right, now we're getting to the very first unique card to Spike Brothers, and that is their other starter that they can utilize as Cheer Girl Frenny. And when you look at this card uh, individually, it sounds really odd. Because this is the first card in standard that can recycle cards from the drop zones and it's not limited to what kind of cards. So we can already uh, recycle triggers with this card. But it also generates uh, counter charge and basically soul charge because you put this card from your hand into the soul. And in most cases you don't really want to run extra great zeros, but in combination with the other cards I think this is quite a useful tech card to have. And that's why I give it four stars, because the extra soul and the counter charge are very good within how Spike Brother function with the other cards. But we're going, you're going to see them very soon, and then we, you will get to uh, understand why this is uh, in the realm of a four star card. Alright, first we've got Funky Bazooka of the uh, very generic grade ones. And I give this card uh, three stars, because it's, it's a quite interesting and good card on its own. It's uh, It's got a bad downside that it's a 7k base, so it's not that ideal to sit on and it doesn't really make that much magic numbers, but it's uh, gaining power of 5k is very interesting and very useful within the mechanical Spike Brothers that constantly are placing and generating more rear guards on the uh, front row. So this skill will proc every t basically every turn and if you want to abuse it, you can you can proc it two times, but is that 5k that much worth it? I don't think so, but nonetheless, it's a decent card, so that's why I give it three stars. Uh, next up we've got White Tight Ant, and it's an 8k, so that's that's a plus. And it gains 10k when it attacks, so basically a great one that you want to use as a attacker. And that's quite decent, that it can become an 18k, and in, with a combination with the VR with Siegfried, it can become a 28, but the problem is it only gets 10k when you have four more rear guards. And it basically states that you have one column filled and actually the other column also filled. So you're basically they're asking you to have a column with only grade ones. And when you look at the debt, it's actually pretty bad because you want to utilize the grade twos within this deck. And because it's a force clan, it doesn't have any extra front row rear guard circle. So Using that skill is also not really good. You cannot put it on an Excel circle. And you can say, well, yeah, you can put a grade one behind your Vanguard, and that's true. But still, in most cases, you want to rely on the grade twos. And I think you have other grade ones that can force the engine a lot faster and quicker that I think this power play with this grade one isn't really that much worth it because you can do other power plays, I think even better power plays with grade twos, and those grade ones can enable those power plays. So that's why I give this card two stars. It's basically, in my opinion, a budget deck option and not really that strong of a card on its own. All right, next up we've got Diabolic Middle Guard, and it's basically a special interceptor with a 50k shield. And yeah, I think it's a very bad card because it does nothing for your place and I think you're wanting to go with power and not with defensive Spike Brothers is in standard. You want to get consecutively power turns one at another every time moving with more and more refreshing of your units and pushing for damage. And this card does none of that. And that's why I give it a one star because even in the budget deck it's a 9k body in a forest clan that only gets an extra shield. And the extra shield doesn't really help you because you're already sitting on a higher base power. So it doesn't fit. All right, next up we've got the Vanillas. And this is 100% Vanilla. 10k shield, 10k power. And I give it the Vanilla one star. It does nothing. 
is even worse than a 9k with extra shield. All right, next we got uh, basically Morikawa in a unit. So is this the imaginary rare for Spike Brothers or for Cosmic uh, Destructive Roar? Well, no, because unlike the Bluster Blade imaginary that was a five star card, this is actually, in my opinion, a bad card because it has, it hasn't the force marker and it doesn't really redeem that it doesn't have a force marker because it, you can put it in the soul, put a card at the bottom of the, from drops on the bottom of the deck and can draw a card to count charge. So it's basically what the great zero can do, and, but it gets another draw. But, and there's a big but to this card, and that is the fact that it needs to stay on the field for an entire turn, because it's at the beginning of the main phase. Meaning, this card is sitting duck for that entire turn when it's on the field. If you put it on the field, it's a 30k does nothing. And when you're playing as Kagero, this is a dead card, definitely, because they're shooting it with a retirement skill, you cannot even guard for it and it's gone. When you're gonna get uh, up against an Exo Clan, they have multiple attacks to hit that thing to uh, disrupt your uh, ways to get resources. So, in that regard, I don't think it's a good great free because it's too susceptible for removal and it doesn't really do anything then to be able at the next turn. So, you're not getting anything valuable in the turn that you play this card. So, that's why I think it's a very bad card. It's not useless like the 10k vanilla for example so that's why i give it two stars but still i don't like this card in that regards because there are other options and other very strong plays that can do things at the turn that they are played so that's why i give it only two stars all right we got uh the uh, vanilla sentinel grade one Great, uh, okay card two stars let's move on all right next up we've got wonder boy and i think one of those uh, favorite card of uh, the original uh, series uh, Kyo, uh, Kyo's deck. And for this case I want, uh, I can see why, because it's a very good card that helps with enabling power and a lot of pressure and it keeps recycling your deck. Because this can also put a trigger back in your deck, but also another card, as long as it's another grade 1. So it, it, it doesn't enable an infinite loop with itself, but you can help with the other cards to can a, a, a semi infinite loop going but yeah it's a little bit awkward to do that but on its own it's a very good card because you can recycle things this unit get power so it's a 30k booster it's also an 8k base set to, uh, to be mentioned and every turn you can get one into the soul and get a new one out of your deck and it doesn't really sound that much but one you're getting soul for free and you're getting one from your deck so it's basically filtering and Spike Brother has a lot of these cards that keep calling the same unit with the same name onto the field. And when you look at that, when you can put maybe at the beginning of your turn, put four cards up from your deck onto the field, uh, and you can, focus, you can focus which cards those are, that's an amazing way to filter your deck to have only triggers. And when you use its skill to put only triggers back, then you can, get, can spiral very fast on the control that you have Basically a 50% trigger deck or 70% trigger deck depending on how far you are in the game So that's why I give this star this card four stars Because it has a lot of potential not only directly on the board But also on your deck and in combining it with the VR and combining with the other great tools This is quite an insane combo and uh, in Synergy that's going on within the Spike Brothers within standard within this set. So that's why it's a very good card all right, next we've got uh, Commander Gary Cannon, and a lot of I've seen a lot of people that goes crazy of this card because the card states draw two cards, and that sounds really strong. But when you dissect this card, it's actually a plus nothing. It's basically a cycle card because you put this card uh, when the attack hits. That's also a thing. It needs to hit a Vanguard, so your opponent can deny you the resources. But you put this card into the soul, you draw two, and then put one card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. So when you add all things up, it's a plus zero. But it's still a very good card in the way that you can cycle through your deck. You're getting draw two extra cards, and you can put one card that you cannot use in your hand back into the deck. So basically, maybe you have a grade two that uh, fetch itself at the beginning of the turn, you have drawn every grade two of it. You can put that grade two in the bottom of the deck. And so you don't have to waste by guarding it, putting it in a drop zone and use another card to be able to put him from the drop zone deck because you can use this skill. 
But at the same time, it doesn't generate extra resources, it just cycles things and it can f uh, fix your deck or your hand or your soul. So it helps fixing things and not fetching things. And it also needs a hit. So when you add everything up, it's a decent card. It's not a great card, it's just good, it's decent. So that's why I give it three stars. Still a good card and you're going to run it, but I think in the future when we get more and more and more and more great ones, I think this is going to put, we're going to put it out of the deck and give it, uh, give something better in, re in returning our decks. So, but still a decent card. All right, next up we've got the grade two version of Wonder Boy and that is High Speed Brocky. But I'm like, Wonder Boy, this card gets even more power because it's got a 10k increase when you place on the field. So it gets immediately uh, returned on the field because when you place from hand, it becomes a 20k attacker. Combine that with Siegfried, it can become a 30k, or combine it with Force Marker, it can be even come higher. And you can see why this card is even be is way better than Segiwal to grade 3 without the Force Marker that does nothing on the turn that you play it. This does something on the turn that you play it. But it also has a skill that, like Wonder Boy, that every uh, new turn at the beginning of the main phase of the next turn, you can put it in the soul, get a new one from deck. So there's another card that recycles through your deck. So again, very good. And that's why I give it uh, definitely uh, four stars, because it helps recycling through your deck. It isn't that great, uh, amazing, because uh, it does something very, uh, uh, very strong, but still it gets a lot of pressure on the field immediately. And that makes it a very good card, and that's why it's a four star worth. And talking about four star cards, again, Spike Brother got a lot of these. We got another one that's Treasured Black Panther. And this is a, a, a card that you can get a certain power increase on your choice. Because you need to Soul Blast it to give it power. And you can choose between the amount of power that you give it. You can give it either 5k or you can give it 15k. But if you go for the 15k, you need to put it into the Soul at the end of the battle. Because at the end of the battle, you cannot synergize with other cards. But still, to be able to uh, decide the amount of power you can give it, makes it a good flexible card. And if you combine it with the other skill of Sigfrid, you can stand units, then you can see a combination with this card. That give it first time, you give it 5k. If you hit, then you give it 15k and it puts in the soul. In the soul. And that way you can refund the soul blast that you paid to be able to use this card. And that's why I give it a 4 star card like Bracky, because it has a lot of utility options. It doesn't have the cycle positive of a cycle that Bracky has, but it has a lot more uh, utility unlike Bracky, and that's why it gets uh, the same star rating because they all, both have their own upsides in their own regards. So still very good grade to, to run in your deck. All right, next up we've got the draw trigger PG. Again, five stars, definitely in a deck like Spike Brothers where drawing cards is very important. And even if you combine it with the old uh, premium uh, style. So five stars, let's move on. All right, first we got the double rare, uh, different double rare, and that is Gyro Slinger. And this is uh, basically uh, one of two cards that can spare call cards from your deck within the amount of that your finger is that great. So if you're grade one, you can check the top one. If you're grade two, you can ch check top two and call something. So depending on how far you're in the game, this card gets only better and better. But also when you look at this card, it's a free skill. It's, you don't need to put one in your hand, from your hand into the soul. So if your opponent was first, and you went, uh, you went second, and you uh, ride to grid one. You can either ride this thing or call it to rearguard circle. Check the top, call another card to the field, and basically have an, a, a full field f from nothing. And that is an immediate rush mechanic within Spike Brothers that can force a lot of pressure on your opponent from the right from the get go. And that makes this card incredibly strong. And it gets, a, and it also gains power uh, to the card that is uh, called. So it doesn't even matter what you call. If you call a trigger, it still hits because it becomes a 9k or even 10k, depending on what kind of trigger it is. And that is an amazing way to put out pressure from basically nothing. Because if yeah, you put a card from your hand in the soul, but that's not bad because it's Spike Brothers. You want cards in your soul, and if you have a, a handful of great frees. Well, you cannot use it anyway, so might as well put one into the soul. So that's why I give this card five stars, because it doesn't matter what kind of state you are in the game. This card is incredibly strong and can basically go from nothing in to, to something in that regard. And that's very powerful in a force clan that has force markers and they want to fill those force markers. So that's why very 
Very strong card, and it's a five star card. All right, next we got the Mega old Mega Blast card for Spike Brothers, and that is Unite Attacker. And don't don't confuse it with the keyword Unite from Gold Paladin. This is Spike Brothers, and uh, the skill itself is it's decent that you can check top five, call uh, up to five cards, and give uh, three in your front row plus five k. But if you combine it with things like Brocky and out of VR works and uh, the other cards that can generate power, it's quite lacking in the power department. And the fact that you need to put on a Vanguard, you're uh, removing your Siegfried, and Siegfried is always useful because of his first skill. So it's really the question, do you want to rewrite this thing? And uh, you can maybe say, well, if it's your first right target, you can immediately fill your, fill your board. But again, Soul Blast 7, if you do the math, you cannot get this thing on your first grade 3 target active. Because you have uh, a grade zero, a grade one, and a grade two in the soul. That's three souls, and you need to generate four more cards. Well, if you called a Wonder Boy on turn one, then on turn two that's one in the soul, and and on turn three that's not in the soul, that's five. But if you call a Brocky on turn uh, on turn two, there's another one in the soul, that's six. So if you have the ultimate setup, you have six, not seven. So you need to get from. Uh, Gyro Slinger, you need to hit a, a, a Brocky, and you need to have a Wonder Boy in hand, and you need to go uh, keep them on the field for two turns to be able to hit those seven souls on your first grade three target. So that's basically never going to happen. And that's basically the only window in my mind that this card is very strong. Late game, there are other potentials to fill your board or to keep consecutively, uh, consecutively f uh, get strong units on the field. And when you use this maybe in turn 3 or 4, then what's left in your deck to call? Because all the grade 2s have already been cycled out, the grade 1s, basically only you are not useful cards or triggers are on the field. So getting those cards on the field isn't even that good. So that's why I don't see this card working now. But when things work out and when you get uh when we get another support another way of how things work and you're not going to play on the cycle cards anymore then maybe maybe this cards become worth worth it but for now i see it only as a tech options a tech, a tech option in your deck for those situations where your opponent retired your field because also you don't want to use this thing when you have a full field so why would you so that's why I gave it two stars. And some people can say, well, it's the same when you look at it like uh, Vortex Dragon. I gave that card five stars. But again, Vortex Dragon skill only counts two counter blasts. You need to sit at five damage. Well, you're going to go to five damage in most games because that's how the game works. You're going, want, your opponent wants to kill you. And it only costs two counter blasts. So it's not even that impossible to use the skill. If that skill can go active every game 100%. So that's why it's a good skill. This, however, is Soul Blast 7, so you need to have 7 Soul ready when you use this thing. And it's only useful when you have an empty field, and when you have enough good cards in your deck that calling those cards is useful. There are a lot of more requirements to be able to use the skill uh, effectively, unlike Vortex Dragon that only requires you to have 2 counter blasts sitting on 5 damage, and it blows up your entire opponent's field. Those are worlds apart from each other. And that's why this card is only two stars in my mind. It's still a good tech card to have for one or two in your deck, depending on how much you like this card. But I highly doubt that this card will effectively win a lot of games. Sure, they will win a game, but not that much as most people will think. All right, next up, we've got the first triple rare. That's Spike Bouncer. And this is actually a very good card, unlike United Attacker. Because this has the same skill as Gyroslinger. Unless Gyroslinger, this one has a counter blast and a soul blast. But when you think about it, it's a great 2, so your opponent had the chance to attack you, so you will have the counter blast, and you will have the soul because you're right, so the cost is quite uh, logical in that regard. And uh, besides that, it's at the same skills. Again, superior calling from out of nowhere is still a very good skill to have when you want to fill your field. And the other skill that you can, uh, at the end of the battle, you can put it into soul and draw a card, is also very good because you can fill your soul, and you can play anti-aggro against Kagero because it cannot retire it because it's already in the soul and you're drawing card. Against those cards, effects are very good against a control meta. We aren't that much in a control meta nowadays because we only have Kagero that can ac actively retire stuff. And uh, Tachikazu have one unit and Spike you're going to sh see in a couple of minutes has also a unit. But you don't have to fear those units. 
So it's only against Kagero. But when Narukami, Dark Regulars, and other Shadow Panel, and all those other clans will get support, then these kinds of skills will only get better and better as time progresses. So that's why this card is five stars in my word. In my opinion, it's five stars worth. Because it works in every kind of situation and it can only become better as the game progresses and as Fangard, the game of Fangard itself progresses. So that's why it's a very good future-proof card in that regard. All right, next up, we got the second triple R and that's Jaggernaut Maximum. And this is the grade three version of Rocky. And it's even better because it's a grade three and it has a force marker. It's a 13K base that gets 10K increase, becoming a 23 base. And 23 is a good magic number. Again, it's a force clan because it hits the 10k mark. And that makes this card even better than, than most in most cases. But again, it, it's uh, the fact that it recycles itself then uh, as Brocky is a little bit of a minor point because you're putting great freeze with force markers in your soul without riding them. So you're not getting those force markers on the field. So that's why it's not uh, a five star card, but a four star card like Brocky because you're not getting use utility of those force marker, but its power gain is also on the Vanguard circle, so that's a big plus. If it was only on the Rigor circle, uh, the card would be a lot bad, a lot, a lot worse. But uh, you you also get the power increase on the Vanguard circle, so you become a 23k attack when you call it or ride it. So that's very good and makes it always useful in every situation. So you're not that. It's not that bad to write this thing as first grade free because you get the force marker and you get a powerful target attack right from the get go without even doing anything. But you're not getting the cycle because it only works when it's on the rear guard circle. And now we get to the last card and that's the VR. And as always, we gotta save the last for best. And that's General Siegfried. And this is basically, un unlike Tachi and Mega Conley where the VR uh, may, uh, rounds out the deck, this is basically an extra add-on and all the skills that already were shown in the rest of the set. Because its first skill is basically the same skill that uh, Juggernaut Maximum has, Brocky has, and Wonderboy has. But you can use it on all any rearguard that you want. So you can even make the same kind of deck without running those free cards. Because for count plus one, put a rearguard in the soul, you can call the same rearguard and it gains 10k. But if you combine it with those two cards, or uh, if you combine it with Maximum and uh, Brocky, those get another 10k, so they gain an additional 20k. And when you combine it with a Force Marker, that's another 10k on those uh, potential attack. So that's very good. Now, this card has also the second skill that makes use of the Incredible Soul that you build up. Sure, you can use the Incredible Soul that you build up with Unite Attacker, but again, if you use this card and all those utility cards, then your Night Tacker will become a little bit bad. But you can use the Soul with his second skill. And as by when he's hit, Soul best 2, you can restand the rear guard and you can retire one of your opponents. And those restanding ability with powerful cards that we have in Spike Brothers is insane. Because when you uh, compare it with something like Nova Grappler, they have an, um, uh, they have a 22k attack. Finger attacks, countless to restand that and restand something else. Well, a 22k attacker restander is not as is not as scary as when I say, well, yeah, I attacked you with a unit that's uh, let's say uh, 38. It restands, but now it's uh, maybe 48 or something like that. When you combine it with um, uh, Black Panther, that gets instead that I give it a 5k increase, and now I give it a 50k increase on the second attack because sure, I already restand it, so now I get even more powerful, or it can even get more power when I have even more force markers stacked on that thing. So, the restand in a force clan is incredibly strong, and it's basically free as for the, the soul is generated from nowhere because all the cards are going into the soul, anyways. So, soul blessing 2 isn't really that big of a deal, and that makes this card very strong and it can even build its own its own deck alone with this card because its first skill doesn't require you to run things like Brocky or Juggernaut Maximum Maximum because it can use it on any kind of card. So when we get certain play skill that generate resources or can retire stuff or can draw things, if you combine it with, with General Siegfried in the future, then those kinds of skills can spiral very fast out of control because you can generate a lot of resources con consecutively over multiple turns without having, hmm, can I draw that card? Have, if I have the luck, if I can consistently draw the card turn after turn. No, you, you're just fetching it with Siegfried. 
So that's why this card is definitely 5 star worth. And I think this card is going to be the center of Spike Brother for a long time. Or at least is going to be a tech card in most future decks because its skill itself is so useful and so strong. Maybe not the hit skill, but at least its X skill is very good. And with that we rounded out all the uh, support that Spike Brother got in the first set for Spike Brothers in Standard. And although it's a little bit different take of what Spike Brother has used to be in the premium side well, in the G era. And where G was a lot of combo driven where you use things, call another one, keep attacking, then call another thing, then bind something, call it again. And go all these wacky interactions and combinations. This is a more... A uh, float out way with every new turn I get new resources, new units on the field and push out for power instead of the wacky combination within one turn. So it's not multi-tech focus, but it's more of a consistent power based focus. And that's very interesting in a way of uh, seeing as how Spike Brothers works. I think it's going to be a lot easier and a lot uh, for as some veteran Spike Brothers players uh, have stated, a lot duller in that regard because it's not a lot of more thinking about all these amazing strategies of combinations is more uh, like Royal Pedal Lane, more fleshed out and more uh, very narrow-minded way of how you can do things. But unlike Royal Pedal Lane, where the combinations are very limited to what you can do, Spike Brothers have a lot of things still to focus uh, to think about, like do I want to call it from my deck with its own skill? Do I want to call it with Siegfried? Do I want to put specific cards in my deck back? Would you want to get another grade 2, another grade 3 so I can go another turn with that recycle skill? Or do I want to put something triggers back to get those triggers? And that makes it a lot more interesting than the Royal Paladin way of how standard is. So that makes Spike Brothers a very interesting deck to play against, to play with, and to just tinker around with it and see what the best options and best strategies are. So... Yeah, I'm very curious of what you guys think of what Spike Brothers uh, had to offer in the first set in Standard. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below uh, what your opinion is and if you like this video. And of course, if you like this video, then why not leave a like and hit the subscribe and the bell button to be updated when I upload more videos. And of course, I'm Mr. Timely and I'll see you guys in the next one.